it is seven o'clock and I'm going to take my dog for his daily walk to use the bathroom. This will be like my first time trying to do a blog type of video. Yesterday, I attempted to do um, a cleaning video, but there was a little bit too much. I was still crying and carrying on, so it was just hard for me to do. Um, I'm going to try to attempt to finish cleaning. Um, my granddaughter that passed, her family, her father... And the grandparents are supposed to come today to help us make her funeral arrangements. Whether they show or not, I don't know. I didn't think to include them. My, my baby, my daughter, asked me if I had been keeping in contact with his parents. And I said no, because she died on their watch. I would think that they would contact me. They would contact us whether it be a text or a phone call to say, hey, just letting you know, please keep us involved in the process um, for baby girl. We want to be there. We want to help. We want to support. So no, it wasn't on my mind to contact them for anything. However, I am taking my daughter's lead on this. I got to pause. Good morning. So anyway... So anyway, I wasn't thinking to contact his parents because I felt as though since it's happened on their watch that they should be the ones to contact us. Just, hey, how are you? Um, I know we are going through a difficult time, but if you could keep us abreast of the arrangement, if you could just tell us what's going on, where is it going to be? Um, not that we're expecting them to help financially because that's already covered. But even if they were to say, how much um, do you need? What can we help with? Stuff like that. That's all that um, we need. So I feel like I'm going to vlog a little bit to kind of help me keep it together um, through this situation. I know today it's going to be very hard for my daughter and my family. She was only four months. Four months old. Beautiful smile. Just learning how to roll over, starting to crawl. Uh, she loves sucking on her little fingers. So... Knowing that her Gigi wasn't there to help her, it breaks my heart. I just have to trust and believe that my poor baby is with the Lord right now. That my mom has her wrapped in her arms. And she's like, Mom, I'm Susie is not letting you go, baby. And that means my Auntie Marlene is probably saying, Susie, give me the baby. Give me the baby. Let me hold the baby. My Uncle Johnny, my Uncle Jimmy, they're all up there. My cousin Barry, give me the baby. Let me hold her. I know my mom has her. I know she's in God's arms. I know she is. But my daughter has been surrounded by so much love. So much love. Her um, best friend has driven just about every day the, the 45 minutes um, up and back to where we live. Um, her mother has come with her, like offering prayer, love, whatever we need. She has it for us, like just whatever, whatever we need. Um, her one friend just drove two and a half hours, almost three hours from Plainfield, New Jersey, her college friend, so she's been with her. Um, my cousin Deja, who's like cousin best friend, has been there. Um, 
she brings her sister who's and our their sisters are 15 years old so uh, me and my cousin both had children at the same time twice <laughs> so Deja and Brianna are bestie cousins and then we have Renasia and Maya are bestie cousins so they come and they support and uplift each other she, she's just had so many people her job come on baby come on her job Wawa has been phenomenal they've been sending things they said no matter what we need as far as food for the repass or just for whatever they got us to not worry about it um, they sent her a great big box filled with um, Wawa blankets like the, the little fleece blankets they sent her um, edible arrangements they said there's more to come She's been getting so many edible arrangements, Harry and David. Her school is behind her because my baby was supposed to start her last semester Monday and she would have been done in November. And now my baby's on a health plan. She's on a safety plan to make sure she doesn't harm herself because that's how devastated she is about losing her baby. And I can't blame her. She cried to me and told me, Mom, I don't want to cause you any pain, but I can't do this. I can't live without my daughter. And as a mom, what do you say to that? I told her I understand because I've been there. And unfortunately, that was when my mom passed and I didn't have anybody. I was the only child. My dad had just passed that September. I did have two other children and I was pregnant with Brianna when the doctor told my mom she had terminal lung cancer. I did not see a light at the end of the tunnel at all. Um, it's because of Brianna that I was able to hold on. My mom held on. The doctors told her, you will not live to see your granddaughter be born in June. You will be dead. My mom held on until December. So she was able to see Brianna come into the world in June and be with her for as long as she could. And my mom was in her right mind still when she passed from that brain tumor. So she still got to be a part of Brianna's life. So there's no doubt that my mom has Mael wrapped in her arms. No doubt at all. And the reason why I said I'm gonna do these videos like this is because I feel like it may be therapeutic for me just to help me and, and to help my daughter through it <sighs> the saddest thing is Ben don't pull me the saddest thing is hold on Ben is that my daughter um, the dog that I'm walking is her daughter. I mean, it's her. It's my. He won't let me get his leash. Come on. You hear the other dog? There we go. Um, it's her dog. And she's just been so sad. And he's been so sad because she won't touch him. She won't talk to him. And just two days ago, she finally came out of the room because she's been sleeping with me she came out of the room and um she chased him a little bit and he played with her and she rubbed all over him and she laughed and she smiled and i just said thank you god thank you because this is her buddy this is her little buddy and he's so attached to me but still this is her little buddy and of course he senses that something's wrong. Um, my daughter's been like sleeping with me every night. She did not sleep with me tonight. She slept um, in the basement with her friend um, to make it her friend more comfortable. So they slept downstairs. But my daughter won't even go into her bedroom because that's where all my grand princess's stuff is at. So she won't go in there. But I told her, mom is here for you i'm not going to leave your side 
until you're ready. I took a leave of absence from work to be with my baby. Because she's more important. Thankfully, my husband, you know, <laughs> knows that I have the type of job where I could do this. But even though I'm not going to be getting my full pay, uh, I'm married to somebody that can cover <laughs> the things that I'm responsible for. There's no doubt will still be taken care of by him because that's just the type of man that I have. I just ask that if everybody could keep us in prayer and send prayers up for baby Mael. Her name was Mael Rain Dozier. Going to stay with her father while my daughter went back to school, we dropped her off that Thursday evening. My daughter said, Mom, I want to turn back around and get my baby. I want to get my baby. And I said, yeah, you should. I said, let's go get her. And then she looked at me. I looked at her. And I said, well, maybe they'll be okay with Mama. We just have to trust in God. And then they get that call like at five o'clock in the morning and he made it seem like he rolled on her and that she was just hurt and went to the doctor to get checked out when the whole time they knew my baby was gone that they did all they could do he stopped answering the phone i guess because he was traumatized and didn't want to face my daughter so that meant i had to call his mom and she's screaming and hollering and crying. And I'm telling her that there better not be nothing wrong with my baby. My baby better be okay. And all she did was cry and cry and cry. And we got in our cars. My daughter took off in her car. She didn't even give us a chance to get all in the same car. And she got down there first to Virginia. And that broke my heart that my baby had to walk in. And I'm on the phone with her, and she's demanding, where's my baby? Where's my baby? <sighs> and I heard that they were trying to restrain her because she was going crazy. And I'm shouting on the phone to get the fuck off my daughter. My husband tried to get there as fast as he could, but we were a good 20 minutes behind her. So we got there, and I'm telling you, this situation is so surreal. You, you, you hear of it happening, but you never think that it could touch you. Nobody's untouchable. Nobody. So my focus is to make sure that my grandbaby is honored in life and in death. I'm already thinking of plans. We're going to do a garden for her in front of our house for her and our other granddaughter, Azari. And we're going to be doing a balloon release next month on what would have been her fifth uh, month of life. I'm looking forward to starting some type of Maya Rain Foundation to bring awareness to co-sleeping with babies and stuff like that or just something something in her name and oddly enough my grandbaby was born March 23rd the day after her pop-up's birthday she passed August 7th the day after her uncle's birthday so She's left a void, a mark that can never be um, forgotten. At all. So, guys, just keep her name lifted in prayer. Keep my daughter Brianna's name lifted in prayer. 
keep her father's name, Isaac, lifted in prayer. I want to get back to the house and clean, and this guy is just going to town. <sighs> My neighbors have started finding out, and they have been very supportive, bringing food, beverages, snacks, just coming over, offering their condolences. So... very happy about everything with the outpouring of love and support. My dog is nosy. I'm trying to get him to come on and a car stopped and he just wants to be nosy. Come on. Come on. This dog. Bentley. Come on. She don't want you. Come on. Bentley, seriously, let's go. So, I'm about to get in the house, get in the shower. You know, I'm going to go in the house. I'm going to clean up for a little bit. And then I'm going to get in the shower and get dressed. Our appointment isn't until 2 o'clock. Hello? I'm 2 o'clock. So I don't know if his family plans on stopping by halfway through. I don't know. Like I said, I haven't been communicating with them at all. So I don't know. I'm gonna put a little clip in here of my precious little angel so that you all can see for yourself how full of life she was. And I called her L Bell. She was my little L Bell. Her face with her little delicate features and stuff. So that was my L Bell. My L baby. So from can't say I no longer have two grand princesses because my L will always be with me. And this is the area that we're going to change into a um, garden for her and Azari. We're going to, next year, at some point, get it landscaped and have, have beautiful flowers here. And have their names and just have flowers that attract butterflies and birds and some type of water feature. I can't wait until we do that. Maybe if we could accomplish that by her first birthday in March. We could do like a dedication. But um, I'm going to leave you all with a clip of my elbow. And like I said, please just keep us all lifted in prayer. Because that's what we need right now. If I could take my daughter's pain away, if I could switch places with my grandbaby, I would do it in a heartbeat. No questions asked. Mm. Hey, Elle. Hi. Hi. <coughs> Hi. You got big head. You got big head, little head. Come on. So when I turn the camera on, you stop screaming. When I turn it off, you scream. <gasps> hey, Elbel. Hi. Hey, Elbel. Hi. Hi. 
I'm gonna cry when we drop you off, L. I'm gonna cry. Just have to trust in God that you will be okay. Right? Right? You'll be okay. You want my phone? Come get your toy. All right, I'll turn.